the Berkshire UFO. And it happened on the night of September 1st, 1969, in Berkshire, Massachusetts. Multiple people over the course of a night, going north to south, are abducted. Over the course of the night. And it happens in order. So let's see. All of them reported a blinding flash of light, followed by a large jump in time where things seemed like nothing happened, except for a couple of minute things. Uh, in one case, a couple switched from the driver's seat to the passenger seat. So the driver was no longer, he was now in the passenger seat, and now the p person who was in the passenger seat was now in the driver's seat. Uh, another case was a child woke up from being on the porch to out in the middle of the field. Things like that. And of course, this all happened over the course of one night. It started up north and slowly was moving its way south, according to their time period. And so as things started going on, people started calling into this radio station saying, hey, there are these weird UFO lights in the sky and so on and so forth. And uh, people were calling into this local radio station saying they've seen the UFO. Uh, a couple of them called in after you know they returned back saying, hey, something weird just happened. And suddenly all the tapes were deleted. So, like, it was live on the air, but it was deleted. So we can't listen to it anymore. Now, what's interesting to me is the aftermath of this. The aftermath of all of this was people being mocked by their locals, their best friends for their entire life, saying you're crazy for thinking you've been abducted. And that these people have never met each other before. And they've been mocked by locals their entire life. To this day, they still get mocked. And, um, but a lot of them wound up finding each other. And many of them become good friends because of this experience. Uh, so they never knew each other before they were abducted and anything like that. But eventually they find each other. All of these people that were abducted many of which are dead because it happened in 1969, but the children are still alive, and many of them are still friends uh, because of this incident. And or they suddenly, there was one case where two people were walking in a store and they recognized each other from what happened. Like, I'd seen you in my dreams. And they become friends. They sort of while they're mocked by everyone else, they sort of become buddies. And a lot of these families had to move away because they were getting ridiculed so much. They had lived there their entire lives, and suddenly now they can't escape um, the fact that their neighbors now laugh at them every five seconds, and particularly the children. It was the children who, who went mm -hmm. in and, you know, they'd say, oh, yeah, I got abducted by aliens or something like that. And they would hear from other children, my father thinks you're full of shit and everything like that, and sort of the town gossip and so on and so forth that happens. And so a lot of people had to move out and leave because of what happened. And I think the story here is extremely fascinating and would make a fantastic movie where there is almost yeah. two parts. Part yeah. one is the actual night that it happens and so on and so forth the night of the event, and it would kind of follow in order, so on and so forth. And then the second half of the movie is just that, the aftermath of what happens. You know, like the radio operator, he lost his job because of this. Um, because he kept saying, no, something happened, but the police kept making fun of him, and eventually his boss said, enough is enough, you're fired. He lost his job because of this night and everything like that. And the idea that these people eventually came together and sort of formed a bond. Like, you know, despite mm. the fact that everybody else thinks they're crazy, uh, they kind of have each other in a weird way. And this this particular case, the Berkshire UFO, if you want to learn more about it, you can actually go on to Netflix and you can watch the second to last episode of Unsolved Mysteries, where it really goes into in-depth about the story. And mm -hmm. it is so fascinating. And while I'm not one to really believe in UFO abduction stories, there's only a few cases that I believe in. This is one of them. Mm. This, this is one of them. There's too many outlying factors that don't quite add up to make logical sense that make me go, they were making this up. I fully believe something happened to them that night. Uh, but mm -hmm. I would love this to be made into a movie to the point that I wrote an outline <laughs> uh, of it. 
um, and so on and so forth. But I think it, it would make one hell of a of an interesting, in the very least, movie. Maybe not necessarily horror scary, in a way, mm-hmm. but definitely one to yeah. make you think throughout the entire throughout the entire thing and so on and so forth and uh yeah that was that's my number one pick i, I would really love to make this okay into a film. yeah yeah i'm actually like because this is something i feel like we that could have got blown up in conversation between us but i'm kind of glad it didn't because it's just that's a really interesting thing because again it's not i don't really <laughs> i'm sorry i had to call i see it almost as like to me the highlight the crux of that are the people getting together after the fact that I've been ridiculed for so long, but finding new bonds because of that. That, to me, was the most interesting thing about what you just described to me. Not the, like, potential alien stuff to it, just the follow, the, the aftermath. Absolutely. Really. That's what fascinated me the most about it, too. Is especially yeah. the the story where the, the two guys are in, like, the store. And they recognize Yeah. Them. And they become friends. Like, like this event brought them together and uh it's a weird thing it's it's very actually similar if you want to see a movie that was kind of made that kind of talks about this it's a movie called blue christmas it's a japanese film very good film uh and it's about these people you see the thing with this movie though is it's it's an uh it's a commentary on the uh vietnam war but um the movie on the surface is about all of these people who vanish one night and then come back the other night, and they all have one thing in common, and that is their blood has turned blue. And okay. it's a really good movie. You never see the aliens, by the way, but it's a really good movie because the, the whole thing is not about the abduction. It's about the aftermath of yeah, it yeah. and the alienation, yeah. no pun intended, of these people. You know, it's a giant allegory of basically the soldiers who came home from Vietnam. And so on and so forth. And it's it's a really great film. Really good film. I highly recommend it. But I would treat it very similarly. Like, if I was to make this into a movie, it would be almost a commentary on on the opioid epidemic. Where it's like all these people who do these drugs and so on and so forth and keep relapse. And they yeah, sort of find, yeah. a lot of them tend to find bonds with each other. And they know that it's something that they've got to struggle with their entire lives and so on and so forth. But they kind of have each other getting through this. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. that's personally how I would have approached a film like this. And I remember I, I messaged Antonio like in the middle of the night at like three o'clock in the morning. This, as, as you I usually, usually do, do. Uh, this <laughs> huge diatribe. I like, what do you think of this? <laughs> <laughs> as I usually do, because I don't have Mark anymore. So it's it's become Antonio. 